Raf from JSW Steel uh, discussing the earnings uh, for the uh, for the December quarter. Uh, thanks for talking to us, sir. You have seen the company get uh, go back in the black for the December quarter. Uh, a sequential positive, however, a year on year still a steep decline from what the profits were. So take us through these numbers. What are the factors contributing and by when do you see that gap, the year on year decline gap bridging and numbers getting back to what they used to be? No, last year was an exceptional year. Uh, that's why you always find a decline uh, year on year basis. But if you look at sequentially, there is a big improvement in this quarter. Uh, we have uh, operated all our plants at a very good capacity. The average capacity utilization in the last quarter was 91%. Mm -hmm. So highest ever crude steel production was made by JWT. And at the same time, if I look at uh, sales volumes are concerned, even though they are quite good year on year basis, but if I look at sequentially, they are slightly lower. Because our export uh, volumes have come down by almost close to 32%. So exports could not be done because of the uh, export duty that has been imposed by the government, which was lifted only in the latter part of November. So exports have fallen on year on year basis by 62% and quarter on quarter by 32%. That is why sales volumes are slightly lower on quarter on quarter basis uh, in the last quarter. But at the same time, our domestic sales were the highest ever uh, in the last quarter. So there we have achieved over 5 million tons of sales in the domestic market. So one is volumes, we have done extremely well. At the same time, when the global prices started falling, your Indian steel prices corrected in line with global steel prices. So on average basis, our NSR has come down by 5%. But at the same time, we could work on the cost of production. It came down by 14%. The cooking coal prices have come down the benefit of which as we have guided around $80 per ton. In fact, we got $100 per ton. Even though iron ore prices, we could not get any benefit in the last quarter. Uh, in fact, they were a little higher compared to Q2. But the other areas like power costs, feral oil, uh, and the fluxes, those costs have come down. So costs have come down by 14%. So we got a benefit of lower cost, lower NSR. But net net we have gained because of the lower cost and the higher volume. So both together, our EBITDA per ton improved by almost uh, 5,000 rupees per ton in the, in the quarter on an average basis. At the same time, on a consolidated basis, if I look at it, the subsidiaries, both overseas and India, which have lost money in the last quarter, they turned positive. So there was a good contribution. Net net over 500 crores have been added by overseas operations and the domestic subsidiaries together. So this 500 crores plus standalone standalone EBITDA together, we had posted an EBITDA of 4,500 rupees, 4,500 crores, which amounts to over 8,000 rupees EBITDA per ton. I think these are the main reasons uh, due to which uh, we could show a better performance in the last quarter. So on the subsidiaries, Bhushan Steel, uh, Bhushan Power still remains uh, a loss making for this quarter, right? You were expecting it to see a turnaround. So is that a delayed uh, expectation? So in the Q3, there was high cost inventories. So they were used in the Bhushan Power and Steel. But in spite of that, it made the operating profit. At EBITDA level, they made positive EBITDA, which was negative in the Q2. So to that extent, it is positive. But at the net of net profit level, uh, there was negative. So in this quarter, we'll be able to make it up because high cost inventories are no more. Operations are stabilized. They also increased the capacity from 2.7 to 3.5 million tons. So more volume and stable operations and no high cost inventories. With all these three together, BPSL should be profitable at the net profit level. Thank you. Uh, taking the inventories point forward, uh, you have seen the highest steel, crude steel production for this quarter, the quarter under review. You have earlier mentioned high inventories for the India steel market. You also mentioned the steel prices are still weak. So a combination of this, uh, have you seen inventories lower for you to uh, push out more steel or is it a strategy to ensure you keep market share despite the lower profitability? So in the last quarter, because exports the volumes have fallen, there was the accumulation of inventories to the extent of 1,80,000 tons compared to Q2. 
uh, but after the announcement uh, by china about the covid policy which they have relaxed i think all the commodity prices have gone up including steel prices so steel prices went up in the month of january uh, over 100 to 150 dollar per ton so even domestic prices are looking up uh, in india over and above that what is very encouraging to us the domestic uh, steel demand is uh, very very robust in the first 9 months it was 9 million ton incremental demand so we expect that will further accelerate in this quarter so good demand and increasing steel uh, prices both uh, globally and in india and at the same time coking coal and iron ore prices which are also going up at least coking coal side uh, we don't expect any increase in this quarter in the consumption side we have already procured our coking coal more or less for this quarter so the impact of higher coking coal price will come in the next quarter so with that more volumes uh, and increasing steel prices and no impact of higher coking coal prices in this quarter so we expect uh, definitely a better margin uh, than q3 and q4 so the full impact of the removal or the roll back of the export duty is likely in q4 that we show more see more of that in q4 Yeah, because of the removal of export duty, we'll be able to improve our export volumes and clear our inventories. Yes. And uh, staying on exports, four percent is also lower than what you have already guided of staying in the range of ten to thirty percent of your total sales as exports. So, do you see that increasing? And also, what is your outlook for your export markets? Uh, your press release mentions uh, or warns of. Uh, mild recession in some developed countries or developed economies so how does this play for your exposure the export market or would you be uh, restraining it till 4% so in the last quarter our export volumes on a consolidated basis were 7% if i take entire 9 months so it was 12% that way we are in that range of around 10% not standing how the export markets are there but in the q4 our ability to export because export duty is lifted Uh, is more is better, so we will be able to export now the Asian region and also Latin America and partly to Europe. With that, we will be able to improve the export volumes in this quarter. And give me some guidance on your capital expenditure. Uh, uh, your statements uh, suggest that you have spent close to ten thousand crore rupees as capital expenditure. This is against the revised target of fifteen thousand crore. So you remain confident to meet the remaining five thousand crore in this quarter, the current quarter. Yeah, we have spent close to ten thousand six hundred crore up to thirtieth, thirtieth, thirty-first December. So balance expenditure we will do, and we will live within the fifteen thousand crore. So we will be able to achieve that capex. And would you be more aggressive on the capex side for the next financial year now that you have some uh, ground to cover compared to this financial year? So we have guided total capital expenditure of forty-nine thousand crore, out of which twenty thousand we have guided for the current financial year. Which we moderated considering the uh, uh, steep fall in the margin uh, to 15,000 crores. Uh, so next uh, year, our uh, plan, uh, which we guided, is 20,000 crores. So we will review in the month of May and give the exact amounts uh, for the next financial year. But we will be in that range of around 20,000 crores. Okay, so you are not expecting it to be aggressive to make up for the remaining part of the uh, no, I don't whatever we lost for uh, perfect. That's that's that makes sense. Also, the coal mine auctions. I'm sure you're a participant there. Uh, is there an internal target of uh, what amount of mines you're aiming for, and how do you see the pricing? Are the bids aggressive? Uh, also, how do you plan to fund this? Uh, is would this be internal actuals, or do you think we we'll need to face some funds to meet those uh, bid requirements? As you know, as far as auctions are concerned, there is no upfront payment uh, which is substantial. It is payable over a period of time, as and when. Coal is extracted, so it is only the premium which we have to bid for in the auction. So, as far as the cooking coal mines are concerned, uh, we will be participating in those auctions, uh, and uh, whatever best we can do, we wanted to have backward integration. So, we'll work in that. As far as thermal coal is concerned, we have certain uh, captive uh, thermal plants. So, to, for that, if at all any mines are available, we are participating in those mines. Uh, but we, our focus is more on uh, uh, cooking coal. Is there a ratio or a strategy you are aiming for in terms of coal, both thermal and cooking, in terms of uh, uh, a bifurcation of what should be captive, uh, what should be domestic, and what should be your uh, international or uh, import-oriented coal? 
Today we import the entire 100% of uh, cocaine and thermal, both we import. Uh, so our strategy should be to have some backward integration, at least to the extent of 50% of our requirement. So we have been scouting for mines overseas for a very long time, we couldn't get. So we are also looking for right opportunity to uh, acquire some coal coal mine, uh, at least uh, to have some backward integration for us. And is there a number you have earmarked to meet this 50% uh, backward integration? Is there a capital expenditure earmarked to it? Today, our cooking coal requirement is in the range of 18, 19 million tons. So if it is 50%, we should have 8, 9 million tons of cooking coal uh, backward integration for us. So you would not like to put a number of uh, what that would entail in terms of investment for you? It will be very difficult uh, to say that. It depends upon the market and also the price of cooking coal and what you, either buyer or seller, is looking at it. Uh, so therefore, it is not easy to put a number. And given the global commodity scenario, is it a good time to be a buyer out there for mines? Are you expecting some good deals out there? Cooking coal prices uh, generally in the past, if you see, uh, it used to be in the range of 100 to $150 per ton. Because of this decarbonization plus the war which is happening between Ukraine and Russia, the cooking coal prices are at elevated levels. I don't think this is the long term price. Uh, so we expect the prices to correct. If you're asking me at this price, is the right time to acquire? I don't think so. This is the right time to acquire a coal mine at the current uh, prices. So that will also weigh in at your strategy of these fine acquisitions. And you're not in a hurry. You're not in a hurry. Give me some uh, color on your debt. Uh, where does it stand? Are you comfortable with it? Or do you have debt reduction plans? Uh, we have been guiding to have the debt to EBITDA of 3.75 to 1 uh, as on 30th, 31st, December, 31st December, we were at 3.51. Uh, we wanted to bring it down as far as these ratios are concerned further down. So considering the kind of cash flow generation that would happen in Q4 due to inventory dilution and also expected EBITDA, so we feel that we will be able to bring down our debt uh, below 69,500 crores. The 69,500 crores includes overall uh, 3,500 crores of uh, foreign exchange uh, rupee depreciation impact. So if rupee appreciates, I think some of it will get reversed. If I take out that 69,500, uh, 3,500 crores of FX rate, then actually the debt is 66,000 crores. So the net increase in the current financial year is 9,000 crores. As against the capital expenditure, we have incurred close to 10,700 crores. It is majorly due to capex, the debt has gone up, and also the inventory accretion, uh, which has happened in the in the, uh, in the financial year up to now. So in the Q4, we are diluting our inventory and releasing working capital and the cash generation together. We will be able to bring down our debt uh, down over Q3 and Q4. Okay, okay. And when you say you're diluting in, uh, inventory, would this uh, is there a level, or are you expecting to clear all inventories, uh, all inventories in Q4? Our inventory size on 31st March 22 was uh, 1.35 million ton, whereas now it is over 2 million ton, whereas at least half a million ton we wanted to reduce in this. Okay, in this, that's your 1.3135 1, 1, is your safe inventory levels that you would like to maintain. So one last question. Uh, very recently you spoke about uh, the group uh, also looking at electric vehicles for the second time after uh, considering it a couple of years back. Where does it stand? Would this be a venture that you will consider under JSW Steel or would it be under some good company and any other details that you can share on that? It is not any of the listed companies. It is being done at the promoter's level, at the sponsor level. So this is being evaluated by the group at the promoter level. Okay, so this time it wouldn't be in any of your listed uh, entities? No. No. One final question, if you could give us an outlook for uh, prices, uh, both domestic market, how do you see things moving and upon for the next one year's time? So when the overall uh, production of steel has come down by almost uh, 80 million ton in the last calendar year, in line with the fall in demand globally, the prices were also falling and the margins were under pressure. There were certain triggers which has happened, particularly the announcement by China. So due to the trigger, all the commodity prices have gone up 
and the outlook uh, had only changed. So it is expected uh, in the in the in the in the calendar year 2023. Even the steel production may not go up uh, overall uh, overall globally because Europe is not doing so well, and people are talking about mild recession both in the U.S. and Europe. So considering that there may not be a big uh, revival as far as the demand and production is concerned for steel globally. But as far as India is concerned, it's a completely different story. In the first nine months, not only our production went up, uh, but even demand went up by 11.5% in the first nine months, almost a million ton for every month. That is the incremental demand which has happened. We expect it will further accelerate as far as India is concerned. Uh, one is infrastructure uh, thrust by the government, where more, more and more uh, spending is happening. And the residential, residential houses, residential construction, so there is a big revival we are seeing in the market. Auto is doing very well. Capital industry is doing well. That way, the renewables uh, again consumes a lot of steel. All this together in India, we expect there will be acceleration of the demand. So, considering landed cost of imports uh, today uh, into India, I think the domestic prices there is a scope to increase. So, domestic demand being strong and the prices are reasonably okay. Uh, in our view, I think uh, next year may not be as volatile as we are seeing in the current financial year. So hoping for a better 2023 compared to what 22 has been for the steel sector. Thanks a lot for talking to you, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.